Welcome back everyone. Today's game features the young rising Indian star Nihal Sarin. This game is from the second round of the Aeroflot Open Tournament in Moscow, and Nihal faced the Serbian Grandmaster Aleksandr Injic, who's rated over 2600, so a very strong player in his own right. Nihal had white in this game. He opened with knight of 3. We have knight of 6, c4, c5, the English. Knight c3, knight c6, so going for the four knights English. We have g3, g6, both sides decide to fianchetto their bishops. d4, c takes, knight takes. Bishop g7, bishop g2, both sides castled, and here queen to a5. And what this does is that it makes it more difficult for white to develop the dark square bishop. Ideally, white would like the bishop to be on b2, but now b3 is impossible because of this hanging knight. There are other squares for the bishop, but it leads to black equalizing the position. For example, if bishop to f4, black can play knight takes d4, and here knight to h5. And black is doing absolutely fine. And if bishop e3, knight g4 would be unpleasant. So Nihal played e3, securing the knight and preventing any tactics on the long diagonal. We have d6, bishop d2, queen a6, b3, protecting the c4 pawn. Now bishop g4 from Injic. We have queen to e1, and here rook a to c8, h3 kicking back the bishop, bishop d7, and queen to e2, connecting the rooks. Rook f to d8, and rook f to e1. So the idea behind this move is that white is hoping to one day play e4 and knight to d5, creating a Maroxy bind structure. And if that happens, black will be very tempted to recapture this knight. And after e takes d5, this rook is going, this rook is going to be ideally placed on the open e file. So here black played the move e6, this takes away the d5 square from the knight. Black is also hoping to achieve this d5 break, opening up lines for his rook. But there is a drawback. If d5 is not achieved, then black is going to have a weakness on d6. So here Nihal continued rook a to c1. We have bishop to e8, preparing d5. So Nihal tries to stop that. He captures the knight and plays e4, creating a Maroxy bind structure. Queen to b6, the queen is a bit misplaced on a6, and is hoping to get into the game, maybe queen c5. So here bishop to e3, queen to a5, bishop d4. With his last two moves, Nihal managed to improve his dark square bishop, which is now challenging black's bishop on this long diagonal. So if the knight were to move, then white would happily trade bishops. If black tries knight to d7, hoping to bring the knight to e5, well, this isn't something that white should worry about because white always has to move f4. And if black plays the move e5, this would be a positional mistake, as that only locks in his own bishop, and also gives white a very nice and juicy square on d5. So after bishop to d4, Alexander continued with knight h5. The bishops were traded, and now rook e to d1, eyeing this weakness on d6. Black played the move a6, so probably hoping to chip away with b5. A common idea in the Maroxy bind. So now Nihal continued the game with king to h2, which protects g3, giving him the possibility of going f4. So black can actually continue on with b5, but here Alexander decides on knight to f6, which gives him possibilities of playing h5, h4. The queen can also swing over to h5. Nihal played queen to b2, putting the queen on the same diagonal as the king, provoking Alexander into playing the move e5. 
So here, white can try and play this positionally with a4, which stops black from going b5, and then maybe try and double rooks on the d file. If black tries b5, then here white doesn't have to take, but instead he can play first b4, kicking the queen back, and then now you take and play a5. And this gives white a very dangerous pass pawn. So instead, in this position, Nihal decided to play f4. If black doesn't capture, then white can think about piling up on the f-file, for example, rook f1. The queen can also come over to f2. So here, Injish decided to take, thinking that it would give him some counterplay. Queen h5 played. We have rook d4. And here, black got a little bit too ambitious, and he played g5. If he would have played something else, for example, king g8, queen h5, queen h4, sorry, or even b5, then he would still be fine in this position. But here, g5 was played. Nihal took advantage of black's previous move with knight d5. And the problem now with g5 is that black cannot play bishop takes d5. This would run into rook takes d5. This pawn is pinned. And white is simply threatening rook takes g5. If rook c5, then white can still take with the pawn. And this is simply crushing. So after knight d5, Injic tried queen to h4. Nihal now brings another piece into the attack. We have g4 in attempts to close the f-file, and here Nihal played knight to e7, attacking the rook on c8 and also threatening a big fork on f5. And this is crushing. So bishop d7 was played in attempts to defend the f5 square, but Nihal doesn't even take this rook. Here he plays e5, busting open more lines. We have g takes h3, e takes f6 with check. Queen takes, bishop takes b7. White has a huge advantage, and this rook is also coming over to the g file. So here rook to b8 was played. If queen takes e7, rook e4 check. So if queen f6 in attempts to save the queen, then here rook g1. Queen takes f6, this is completely winning. So after bishop takes b7, rook to b8 was played. But here knight to d5 from Nihal Sarin. And in this position, black resign. So let's play through a possible continuation. Let's say queen to f5, rook g1 check, king to h6, and knight to e7 attacking the queen. Let's say queen f6, here rook takes d6 is crushing. If queen takes d6, queen g7 check, followed by queen g5 mate. So Nihal Sarin is still perfect after two rounds in Moscow. Thanks for watching and do subscribe to see more games from the Aeroflot Open Tournament.